Well, good Monday morning. Today is January the 4th. The year is 2021. And uh, I miss being with y'all the last couple of weeks. Uh, but as I said, I, it, it was nice. It was enjoyable to have a little downtime. And, um, but I'm glad to be back with you. Uh, good morning, Steve, Deborah. How are y'all? Good morning, Allie, Lynn, and four others, it says, are watching. So, it's good. Um, boy, I, a couple of things first. Uh, I hope everybody had a good Christmas and have had a happy new year. I just want to share with you one of my, well, probably my favorite gift that I was given for Christmas. It's right here. Um, this is a picture of my, <laughs> my rascal Ollie, my little snorky that, um, my family accuses me of loving that dog more than I love my own grandkids. Mm, they may or may not be right. I don't know. Uh, but really a shout out, though, to Abby Hammonds. Uh, Y'all know Abby. She's the oldest daughter of, of David and Jenny Hammonds. Incredibly talented and gifted in painting. And, and I love, uh, my wife had her paint this drawing for me of my dog. And... She, I, I just, she's, number one, she's just the sweetest, God-fearing uh, young lady. And as a way to um, help support herself, she's an entrepreneur to a business where she does paintings. And this is one of the paintings she did. And so if you're looking for a painting, and this isn't an advertisement, I'm just saying, um, anyway, she would be a great source for that. So, but anyway, that's my dog, Ollie. And, um. He, he's my baby. My prayer this year, uh, really, as I reflected on the end of the year, um, which I normally do every year, and just kind of evaluate the previous year, my life, where I've, I've walked with the Lord and, and what my desires would be, uh, it, kept, it kind of narrowed down to a focus in 2021 in my own personal life and spiritually that when I boiled it all down, um, what, what I desired to see more in 2021 in my life was just to have a closer walk with the Lord. Um, it's just that simple. Uh, you know, I've known the Lord 37 years now, and um, it's gotten sweeter and sweeter through the years. Uh, but I do recognize that the longer we walk with the Lord, the easier it is for us to kind of take for granted those, uh, our relationship to the Lord and our walk with the Lord. And I reflected on my life and I realized that, that, uh, some of my, my life, the walk of my life had just become kind of categorized and, uh, just assumed that I knew things that, um, that I'd learned and didn't have to grow in those anymore. And so I, my prayer this year is God, I just want to, I just want a closer walk with you. And I hope that that would be your prayer too, that you'd want to, um, have a closer walk with him. Uh, I don't have any ambitions to, to pastor a large church or have a great ministry. I, I don't want to be as effective as God will allow me to be. Uh, but at the end of the day, the thing I think that matters most is that, um, that I have a close walk with him. And so this old song, I wanted to do this morning just a closer walk with thee just to start the year i really praying and asking god to to bring us into a closer walk i am weak but thou art strong jesus keep me from all
with me as a prayer just a closer just a closer walk with me Starting this year, uh, last year we finished the Psalms, and it was a great journey through the Psalms from from March through the end of the year. And today, I I wanted to start in the Book of Proverbs, and we're not going to cover it chapter by chapter because there's just too much in each chapter. So we're probably going to take it stanza by stanza, and just walk through the Book of Proverbs. I can remember when Sandy and I were first saved, um, we we had a devotional that we would follow along and um, it was Daily Walk, I think was the title of it. It was put out by uh, Bruce Wilkinson and it was a reading through the Bible and when we were saved, uh, the Daily Walk was, was in First Kings and so I began reading First Kings and that's not a recommended place for a new believer uh, to begin in the Word, but uh, reading in First Kings, and I can remember distinctly, and I, I remember the apartment we were living in, and coming across this chapter in chapter three of First Kings of King Solomon. Of course, King Solomon was the son of David, and um, at, at his enthronement to the kingship, God had told him, "You can make any request of me uh, that you'd like, and I'll grant it." And I was struck by the the fact that if God had asked me at that time, ask me ask anything of me and I'll give it to you, I'm not sure that I would have asked what Solomon asked for. Um, but I, I read this and and I was amazed uh, at Solomon's request in in verse nine. Uh, preceding that, he he tells God all of the things that he gave that God had given to his father David. And then in, Psalm, in verse 9 of chapter 3, Solomon prays this prayer. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to govern uh, this your people. And what, David, what Solomon had asked for, this translation doesn't use the word wisdom. Some of your translations do. But the thing that he asked God for was that God would give him wisdom, that he would give him understanding as Solomon was going to be the king of God's people. And he said, God, give me the thing I need most in governing and leading these people is I need wisdom. I need the ability to discern uh, right from wrong. I need to be able to discern uh, good from evil. I need to be able to have that understanding of your word, the understanding of your desires, so that I might execute my leading in accordance to your word. Not to just know what your commands are, but God, give me understanding in applying those 
in my life and in leading the people of God. And then God said to him in, ver in uh, verse 12, he said, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. And so God granted him his desire that he would have wisdom. And that passage made a mark in my Christian life early on. And uh, that was the thing that, that I began praying for. And as the years have gone on as a believer and as a pastor, um, as, a, as a husband and as a father and as a grandfather, the thing I realize that, that I need most uh, in life is the wisdom that God would grant. It's one thing to just know his precepts. It's one thing to know his word, but it's another thing to apply them in our lives. And the results and the consequences of applying the knowledge, the word of God, is wisdom in our daily walk and in our daily lives. And uh, who knows best but God? And so God granted to Solomon this wisdom, and Solomon wrote, uh, I, I can almost imagine that it was really journaling for Solomon, that he wrote the Proverbs over his lifetime. Now, if we know Solomon's life, we know that Solomon didn't always follow the advice that, that he wrote, uh, but he knew it. And the Proverbs, as we look through them, walk through them, we're going to find that, that the Proverbs are not, not commands to follow. They're not promises that will, that will actually always happen. But it's Solomon's observation of life in the application of the Word of God. And uh, we might say that, that the Proverbs are more precepts that we follow rather than commands that we follow. Let me give you an example. The Bible is not going to tell somebody what specific person they should marry. But given the whole and collection of Scripture in that, in that uh, subject of marriage, it's going to give some generalizations, if you will, of what to look for in the person that, that you might look to marry. Uh, now, if you're already married, then you found the right person. So, um, but it's, it's precepts that, that we can follow. God's not going to tell us specifically in his word what job we should take. God's not going to tell us in his word where we should live, should we move or should we not move. But there are precepts in the word of God that God will give us direction daily in our lives. And so we find many of those precepts here in the Proverbs. So we're going to look at verses 1 to 7 of chapter 1 today, and it's kind of the introduction of, of, the, of the book of Proverbs. And Solomon begins to write here. He says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. And so here he is kind of given the introduction that that uh, that, that that wisdom is that which we uh, that we get to know instruction, to understand words of insight, to have discernment that we might have wise dealings in righteousness, justice, and equity. And here it deals with relationships with other people, relationships within the body of Christ, relationships within the family, relationships within our country, that we might have God's wisdom to live righteous, to do justice, and to, uh, to mete out equity, to give prudence to the simple. I love that, to give prudence to the simple. Uh, I've shared this before that my dad was probably one of the most simple men that I know, that I knew. But my dad was one of the wisest men that I've ever known. And I believe he had that wisdom because he walked with God and God gave him that wisdom in life. He was a very simple man. He was not a w greatly educated man. Uh, but he was wise in life. And it wasn't just life experience that gave him that wisdom. 
It was, it was that which walking with God and knowing the precepts of God and being obedient to God that gave him that kind of wisdom. This word prudence is, is an incredible word. Uh, it really means, is, it, it means, it means to, to, to have a managed life. So the Proverbs are given to us so that we might have a managed life. Do you know somebody that it seems like every time they turn around, life is just upside down for them? That it seems like they never can get it together, they never can make the right decisions, that every decision they make seems to make everything fall apart, and their life is just kind of helter-skelter. Well, it's because there's not prudence, there's not a managed life. I've often said that the pagan, the one who is even an atheist, if they took the precepts of Proverbs and applied them in their life, they would have a much better life. And so it makes sense for us to follow the Proverbs, to, to walk by the precepts of God so that we might have a managed life. Not only will we benefit, but those around us will benefit if we lived a prudent life. Uh, simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. And so regardless of what somebody's age is, that if they're following the precepts of God, they will have a much more managed life, a prudent life. I know many youth, many young adults that have a more prudent life than older adults that I know have walked with the Lord for eons. And why? It's because they've taken to heart the precepts of God and they've applied them in their lives. But it's never too late for somebody to, um, to take the precepts of God and apply them in their life. Um, let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. So the one who's wise will hear and they will increase in their learning. Again, it doesn't matter at what age we are. As we begin to understand the precepts of God and apply them in our lives, we will certainly gain greater guidance from the Lord and have understanding. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. Here in verse 7, he says, However, the beginning of this wisdom, if we want to have wisdom first, we have to have a fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge Fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord. We've spoken of this as we've gone through the Psalms, but simply what the fear of the Lord means is that we have a reverence for God, that we have a submissive heart to the will of God, that we have an awe of God and recognize that He is far above us and his knowledge is far above our knowledge. Sometimes people can have the idea that they know more than God. Uh, there was a saying when I was a kid that my parents used to always say to me and my grandparents, boy, don't get too big for your britches. Do you remember that? When well, I know a lot of adults, older adults, that are too big for their britches. Uh, somehow or another, they think that they're smarter and they can figure out, and they don't even need to look at God's precepts. It's evident in their life because they're not following them. Um, but, but here he says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, to recognize rightly where we are in relation to God, that God is far above, that God knows all, that God sees all, and that God knows better than we do. And so to have a reverence for God, to have a fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. He says, on the other hand, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So as we set out our walk uh, in the Proverbs, I want to encourage you to, to chew on the nuggets and ask God daily as we're in the Proverbs, God, is there something in this that I need to see? God, is there some change that I need to make in my mindset, in my life, in my behavior? And I guarantee you, based on the authority and the power of the Word of God, that if we do that, 2021 will be a far more significant year 
than 2020 was. And so join me every morning as we go through the Proverbs and share this with others, uh, encourage others to join on. My goal in this again is not to gain a great audience. My goal in this is that we might grow in the knowledge of the Lord and walk closer to Him. I want to also encourage you every single day, as I challenged the congregation yesterday, pray every day. God, give me an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart and life. It's just a small seed, God. But Lord, may I plant the truth of word in the heart of someone else I come in contact with today. God, let me cultivate a seed that's already been planted in somebody's heart in their life. And God, if you would so grace me to be able to be a part of seeing someone come to know Christ, reaping that harvest, and Lord, let me be a part of that. Be salt and light. We are, we are under a pandemic. We're shut in. But that does not mean that the mission has been called off. God's called us to a mission every single day. I want to ask you to continue to pray for the Petrescas. Uh, Constantine is in, uh, in, in Augusta in the hospital there battling that cancer. Pray for their family, uh, that God would continue to strengthen and that God would bring healing to them. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he would keep you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning where we'll pick up in verse 8 of Proverbs chapter 1.